Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. Do I have a good video for you today? I fell down the rabbit hole of capital punishment and the death penalty in the United States. I really did. I fell down that rabbit hole and I'm going to give you a lot of information. I think you're going to find it very interesting. Before I get started, please check me out on YouTube member program. Please check me out on Patreon, on Discord. Just doing great. Our new podcast and new podcast channel. Go check it out. It's the real deal with Larry Lawton. We're in the studio here. We're going to be getting this sound taken care of. Please check out our merch out, the book, Gangster Redemption, all this kind of stuff. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't. And uh, if you like it, please pass it on. Please uh, submit comments because I answer a ton of them. Well, let me get into capital punishment in the United States. And you guys are going to be pretty overwhelmed like I was. And I, I've been on, at this for hours and hours right now. And I decided to make this video because it's important for us to know what's going on. In the United States, capital punishment is, it is legal penalty in 27 states. 23 states have no capital punishment. They abolished it. All of them only are applied for aggravated murder. Although it is legal penalty in 27 states, only 20 states have the ability to execute death sentences. With other seven, as well as the federal government, being subject to different types of moratoriums. The existence of capital punishment in the United States can be traced to early colonial years in Virginia back. And listen to this, everybody. The United States is one of five advanced democracies and the only Western nation that applies the death penalty regularly. It is one of 54 countries worldwide, out of approximately 200 applying it and was the first to develop lethal injection. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing as a method of execution, which has been since adopted by five other countries. The Philippines has since abolished executions. Yes, the Philippines and Guatemala has done so for civil offenses, leaving the United States as one of four countries to still use the method. Along with China, Thailand and Vietnam, it is common practice for the condemned to be administered sedatives prior to the execution, regardless of the method used. There were no executions from 67 till 77. There was a, a Supreme Court case called the Furman case, Furman versus Georgia. And they found uh, that it was too many inconsistencies. So states had to go back and figure out uh, executions and the, the legal ramifications of executions, meaning this. It was all over the board. Some can do it this way, some can do it that way. And every state still can do certain things, but they had to come up with some kind of thing to beat the Supreme Court's case, which was really uh, great. The Trump administration, Department of Justice announced his plans to resume executions for federal crimes in 2019. On July 14, 2020, Daniel Lewis Lee became the first inmate executed by the federal government since 2003. As of January 2022, there were 44 inmates on federal death row. 13 federal death row inmates have been executed since federal executions resumed in July of 2020. The last and most recent federal execution was Dustin Higgs, who was executed January 16, 2021. So, and then Merrick Garland from the new administration has stopped federal executions. Now, in 1972, capital punishment was uh, abolished. Uh, the Supreme Court decided that in the Furman versus Georgia case, Supreme Court considered a group of consolidated cases. The lead case involved an individual convicted under Georgia death penalty statute, which featured a unitary trial procedure in which the jury was asked to return a verdict of guilty. In other words, they were letting people just decide if it, was, if it should be a death penalty case. They had to come up with more uniform uh, rules determine whether the defendant would be punished by death or life imprisonment. The last preferment execution was that of Louis Montage on June 2nd of 1967. In a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court struck down the impositions of the death penalty in each of the consolidated cases as unconstitutional in violation of the 8th and 14th Amendments. That's cruel and unusual punishment. In the United States Constitution, the Supreme Court has never ruled the death penalty to be per se unconstitutional. The five justices in a majority did not produce a common opinion or rationale for their decision. However, and agreed only on a short statement announcing the result. The narrowest opinion, those of Byron White and Potter Stewart, expressed generalization, 
concerns about the in inconsistent application of the death penalty across a variety of cases, but did not exclude the possibility of a constitutional death penalty law. Stewart and William O. Douglas worried explicitly about racial discrimination in enforcement of the death penalty. Thurgood Marshall and William J. Brennan Jr. expressed the opinion that the death penalty was uh, prescribed absol absolutely by the Eighth Amendment as cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, obviously, I think death penalty is cruel and unusual punishment. The cruel and unusual punishment is the Eighth Amendment. Uh, and when you think about it, I think executing somebody by electric electricity or lethal injection or a firing squad or hanging, if that's not cruel and unusual, what is? Uh, I guess there's a non-cruel death still don't get it. You're going to get my opinion here about the death penalty, what I believe in it, after this, after knowing what I know about prisons, after knowing what I know about punishment and the federal system and crime, uh, you're going to hear what uh, I, my beliefs are, my true beliefs. In 1976, the, the death penalty was uh, reinstituted by states because they went over, they tried, uh, one of the states uh, Greg vs. George was upheld 7-2 to procedure in which the trial of capital crimes was bifurcated into guilt, innocent, and sentencing phases. In other words, they had to find out he was guilty of a specific crime. Then they had to have a way that they couldn't mess it up. Like most of the places came back with, they had to have a 100% uh, jury uh agreed that they should death penalty. It was had to be a jury or a three judge panel some states had. Following the decision of capital punishment, the United States soared. This was in contrast to trends in other parts of advanced industrial governments and democracies where the use of capital punishment declined or was prohibited. 47 European states, including Russia, are members of the Council of Europe and they all comply with the European Convention of Human Rights which prohibits capital punishment. The last execution in the UK took place in 1964 and in 1977 in France. Well, in the modern era right now, since 1982, we, Texas has carried out the first execution by lethal injection in world history and lethal injection subsequently became the preferred method throughout the country, uh, d displacing the electric chair. From 76 to December of 2016, there were 1,533 executions, of which 1,349 were lethal injections. 163 by electrocution, 11 by gas inhalation, 3 by hanging, and 3 by firing squad. The South had the greatest majority of these executions, with 1,249. There were 190 in the Midwest, 86 in the West, and only four in the Northeast. No state in the Northeast has conducted an execution since Connecticut, now abolished the death penalty in 2005. The state of Texas alone conducted 571 executions, over one third of the total. The states of Texas, Virginia, now abolished, Virginia just abolished the death penalty, and Oklahoma combined make up over half the total with 802 executions between them. 17 executions have been conducted by the federal government. That, that's a lot, actually. Executions increased in frequency until 1999. 98 prisoners were executed that year. 98 prisoners were executed that year. Since 99, the number of executions has greatly decreased, and the 17 executions in 2020 were the fewest since 1991. A 2016 poll conducted by Pew Research found that support nationwide for the death penalty in the U.S. had fallen below 50% for the first time since the beginning of the post greg era. Uh, the death penalty, we all know, became an issue in 1988. You guys don't know. I remember the Dukakis-Bush debates, and they had Willie Horton, who was a convicted person. He was let out of prison, and he ended up killing somebody. In 96, my man Clinton, again, not my man, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, sarcastically. Uh, 
whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, has nothing to do with Clinton was really bad. He, he enacted the Anti-Terrorism Anti and Effective Death Penalty Act in 96 and has passed and streamlined the appeal process in capital cases. In other words, not many appeals. The it, appeals had to be quicker. The bill was signed into law by President Clinton, who endorsed capital punishment during the 92 presidential campaign. <laughs> How many people? Uh, I don't want to get into that. A jury found that at least 34 of the 749 executions carried out in the U.S. between 77 to 100, or 4.5%, involved unanticipated problems or delays that caused, at least arguably, unnecessary agony for the prisoner or that of reflect gross incompetence of the executioner. The rate of these botched executions remained steady over the period. A study published in, in the Lance, Lancet in 2005 found that 43% of the cases of lethal injection, the blood level of hypnosis of a prisoner was insufficient to ensure unconsciousness. I'm going to get on to this for the I'm not buying this with with how to how to do this with the execution. Uh, if we if we're going to believe in the ex, if we believe in the death penalty, does it matter if he's really fucking lasting longer or how they kill him? Uh, I don't think it should. I, I mean, I'm just saying if you're going to believe in the death penalty. Are we worried about that he couldn't breathe for 20 more seconds or he, he was alive for nine more minutes or something of that nature? I, I'm not sure I do. I'm, I'm going to tell you my beliefs in the death penalty in a minute, but I still don't believe in that, what I just said. Listen to this. Since 1632, 24 years after the first recorded male execution in the Colonies Act back then, Jane Champion became the first woman to be known to have been lawfully executed. She was sentenced to death by hanging after she was convicted of infanticide. Well, I ought to look that up. Infanticide. Infant I-N-F-A-N-T-I-C-I-D-E. It means when a child is, is uh, murdered or dies before a, year's, year, uh, before a year and usually by a family member. Now, that's funny because now the infant death syndrome... Uh, which they know about now, uh, that kid, they die from sleeping on their sides or whatever. Here they think the woman did it and they hang them. Woman accounted for just one fifth of all executions between 1632 and 1759 in the col colonial United States. Now, in the second half of the century, saw the execution of 14 women and six men who were accused of witchcraft during which witch hunt hysteria and the Salem witch trials. While both men and women were executed, 80% of the executions were towards women. So the list of executions disproportionately affected men by a margin of six, uh, six actual to four expected. 50% more men were executed eventually than expected from the percentage of accused were men. Juveniles were also uh, killed back in the early parts of the country. Uh, in 1642, the first juvenile, Thomas Granger, was at, sentenced to death in Plymouth. Okay, and in 19, 2005, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, abolished death penalty. Listen to this. Abolished the death penalty for juveniles claiming cruel and unusual punishment. I get it, but I don't understand why it's cruel and unusual to, to kill a youth, which but not to kill a, 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 a 25 year old or a 21 year old. Uh, the, the arbitrary thing for a youth and an adult is 18. So you're telling me from 17 to 18, it, it's cruel and unusual for a 17 year old, but it's not uncruel and unusual for an 18 year old. I don't buy those arbitrary dates. I think every situation should be different. Uh, obviously I, I'm a belief here in a minute and I'll tell you what I do believe. Most places, all of them have now, what they have to have is aggravated murder for t to be a uh, uh, death penalty case. But this is what really makes me funny with the federal government. There has to be one of 16 factors, one of 16 factors to uh, institute the death penalty. Listen to this. Murder while committing another felony. That means if you're doing a robbery, you kill some. Offender was convicted of a separate felony involving a firearm prior to the aggravated murder. Being convicted of a separate felony where death or life imprisonment was authorized prior to aggravated murder. Being convicted of any separate violent felony prior to the aggravated murder. 
The offender put the lives of at least one or more other persons in danger of death during the commission of the crime. This is everything right now. Well, offender committed the crime in especially cruel, heinous, or deprived manner. The offender committed the crime for financial gain. Okay, so you murder someone for money, big money. Listen, here's how they got the, the gangsters. Offender committed the crime for monetary gain. The murder was premeditated involving planning and order to be carried out. The mafia bosses could order murders and then get the death penalty. Is what they were saying. Offender was previously convicted of a federal federal drug offense. Offender was involved in a long-term business of selling drugs to minors. A high-ranking official was murdered, such as the President of the United States, the leader of another country, or a police officer. Offender was previously convicted of sexual assault or rape, and during the crime of commission, the offender killed or tried to kill multiple people. In other words, everything. Uh, understand it, but don't get it. Crimes against the state, of course, espionage, uh, treason, large-scale large scale drug traffic. They consider that a capital crime under federal law. Treason is also punished by death by six states, Arkansas, California, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, and South Carolina. Large-scale drug trafficking, trafficking is punishable by death in two states, Florida and Missouri. An aircraft kid hijacking in two other states, Georgia and Mississippi. Vermont has an in invalidated preferment statute allowing the electric kit for treason despite abolishing capital punishment in 1965. Obviously, the decision to seek capital punishment is usually on the prosecutor, uh, but usually they have to have the victims or somebody, victim family, obviously, uh, wanting the death penalty. But in 2017, since the uh, Armas Ayala, who was the prosecutor in Orange County, I think it was, Central Florida, right here, I remember the case, in 2007, the Governor Rick Scott at the time removed all capital cases from local prosecutor Arman Ayala because she decided to never seek the death penalty in a matter of gravity, gravity of the crime. In other words, she ran on that, she won election, and then the governor took it away from her uh, and they instituted then, put a, a special prosecutor on it. In the sentencing of the 27 states with dental penalty, 25 require a sentence to be decided by the jury. 24 require unanimous decision by the jury. Two states do not use juries in death penalty cases. In Nebraska, the sentence is decided by three judge panel, which must unanimously agree on death, and the defendant is sentenced to life imprisonment, and one of the judges is opposed. Montana is the only state where the trial judge decides the sentence alone. The only state which does not require a unanimous jury decision is Alabama. At least 10 jurors must concur so they can get 10-2 and still get the death penalty. The states have to have what they call a uh, death qualified jury, which means they are asked uh, various questions and in one way or the other, uh, they, have, they, they get qualified or not. They get a direct review. Everybody gets a direct review, uh, which we all get as well. Uh, they also get they, they get a state collateral review and a federal habeas review, which is important because it goes from the state then to the feds, and then it's if the, usually the Supreme Court doesn't hear them because uh, there's a it's a, if it's a cruel and unusual punishment they already decided that and they don't want to hear it again. On the Clinton Act, I call I call it the Clinton Act. The Effective Death Penalty Act of 1976 provides expedious habeas, meaning they're going to make sure they're done quickly, and I understand that. They execute an actual death warrant by a judge again, and, or the governor, several states, but mostly by a uh, majority of judicial order. And the distribution of the sentences in recent years have been an average of one death sentence for every 200 murder convictions in the United States. Alabama has the highest per capita rate of death sentences. This is because Alabama is one of the few states that allow judges to override a jury recommendation in favor of life imprisonment. A possibility it removed in March of 70. According to the Death Penalty Information Center, the top three factors determining whether a convict gets a death sentence in a murder case are not aggravating factors, but instead the location of the crime occurred and thus whether it is in the jurisdiction of a prosecutor aggressively using the death penalty. Again, that's one person. The quality of the legal defense, you moron. 
and the race of the victim, murder of white victims being punished more harshly. That is just crazy. Among the states, the distribution of death sentences is loosely proportional to their propor populations and murder rates. California, which is the most populous state, also has the largest death row, over 700 inmates. Wyoming, which is the least populous state, has only one condemned man. But the executions are more frequent and happen more quickly after sentencing in conservative states. Texas, which is the second most populous state in the union, carried out over 500 executions during the post-Freeman era, more than a third of the national total. California has carried out only 13 executions during the same period. That shows me that California just got the death row wrong. Among the races, Af this you have to hear. African Americans make up 41% of death row inmates. African Americans have made up 34% of those actually executed since 1976. 21 white offenders have been executed for the murder of black persons since 1976. During that same period, 299 black offenders have been executed for the murder of a white person. 54% of people wrongly convic convicted and sentenced to death in the United States are black. Think of that number. Approximately 13.5% of death row inmates are Hispanic or Latino. Of dissent in 2019, individuals identified as Hispanic and Latino accounted for 5.5% of homicides. The death penalty ex exoration rate of Hispanic and Latino is 8.6%. Think of that, pretty big numbers. Among the sexes, women report that 51 women on death row, 17 women have been executed since 76, compared to 1,516 men during the same time period. So that's pretty crazy. And the methods. The number of executions each year in the method of the United States, earlier colonies from of was hanging, shooting, uh, firing squads. Now, all 27 states with the death penalty murder provide lethal injection as the primary method of execution. But some states let the inmate pick what it is. Lethal injection in South Carolina, unless the drug is to use, is not available. Electrocution is available in Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Kentucky, and Mississippi, Oklahoma. Tennessee and South Carolina, primary method. Gas chamber in Arizona and California, and firing squad in Mississippi, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Utah. Meaning, if you're the death guy and you want to die that way, you can die whichever way you, you want. I'm not so sure how great that is going to be, too. And then there's backup methods for that. Federal executions, obviously. Timothy McVeigh was the biggest one. Had 200 people witness his uh, execution. And I know this for a fact. Terre Haute, Indiana is where the death death penalty is carried out and where the only death penalty place the federal government has in any federal prison. The last public execution was in 1936. That means a person can go watch the execution. And around 1890, the political movement developed where they didn't do hangings in public squares. All states allow news reporters and a lot of states let uh, victims, families watch the execution. And the most, like I said, was 200 people witnessed the Timothy McVeigh. They actually did it on monitors. But the Gallup poll says that the, the numbers are down and, and we shouldn't have the death penalty anymore. A lot of people do. Now, let me tell you why I don't believe in the death penalty. I looked up some crazy stuff since 2021 year-end report, the death penalty. Exonerations in just 2021. The public understanding of the grave dangers of wrongful capital convictions, the death sentence deepened in 2020 as two innocent prisoners were exonerated more than 25 years after being wrongly sentenced to die. And a multi-year death penalty information center review of more than 9,600 death sentences imposed since 1972 discovered 11 previously unreported death row exonerations. The now 186 death row exonerations since 1973 revealed that the American death penalty system is even more frighteningly unreliable than was previously understood. The data now show that one person wrongfully convicted and condemned to die has been exonerated for every 8.3 prisoners who have been executed. Think of that. That is fucking crazy. That is crazy. So... 
I'm not saying all, but it's all due to DNA and everything else that has come out. I personally believe in any of this stuff, DNA, and, and they do DNA, but then they have falsely reporting DNA. So there's, there's people, there has to be different layers of uh, of verification for evidence, especially DNA. Eddie Lee Howard convicted and sentenced to death based on a false forensic testimony on a single disgraced prosecution expert witness was exonerated in January 2021. He was the sixth death row prison exonerated in Mississippi since 73. Howard spent 26 years on death row on charges that he murdered and allegedly raped an 84 year old white woman. He didn't. DNA proved it, a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to get into the case. Sherwood Brown, same thing, was exonerated of a triple murder that sent him to Mississippi's death row in 95. Brown was sentenced to death for murder of a 13-year-old uh, Evangelo Boyd and received two life sentences for the murder of the mother and grandmother. His conviction was death sentence was arrested as a substantial part of false expert forensic testimony. In other words, they lied. Uh, and a jailhouse informant, which we all know is bullshit. The informant was facing serious charges for car theft when he claimed Brown had confessed to the murders. Prosecutors argue that blood found on the sole of Brown's shoes from the victim, but DNA proved that all wrong. Uh, obviously bad lawyering, and he got out with the innocent project. Uh, listen, DNA is, is, is reliable evidence, obviously, if, if it's true. If the people are going to do the true right, eyewitness testimony is the worst uh, evidence you can do in any. Uh, potential exoneration cases right here in my Florida, and I've been reading about, is gross, grossly green. More than 30 years after Florida judge sentenced Green to death following an eight to four sentence recommendation by an all white jury, grossly green was freed in April of 2021. But looking at that case and knowing that case, I went back and looked it up, and another court of appeals overturned that and actually said that Green was resentenced to life before being released this year. Uh, looking that case up, it's sad. Uh, I mean, that case is really crazy. He should be put in front of a jury again. Uh, even the cop on the case is now on Green's side. Think of that. Even the cop on the case is on Green's legal scenes that he was wrongly convicted. Now, here's another one that there's all I'm reading. I'm not going to get into all of them. but. Wrongful capital prosecutions is what's killing it. And here is it. In 2021, payouts expose the collateral cost of wrongful capital, capital convictions. Now, this is where you, the taxpayer, are paying. Tax pay, taxpayers payouts in 2021 from police and prosecutorial misconduct associated with the wrongful use or threatened use of the death penalty exposed a previously hidden collateral cost. Of the capital punishment, the cost of liability in 2021 in multiple death row exonerates won lawsuits against or received compensation awards from jurisdictions that wrong, wrongfully sentenced them to death. And multiple exonerees have lawsuits still pending against the jurisdictions and various officials involved in their wrongful convictions. Henry McCollum and Lee, Lee, Leon Brown in May of 21, half brothers Henry McCollum and Leon Brown were each awarded $31 million, $1 million for each year they spent in prison in North Carolina, plus an additional $13 million in punitive damages. Punitive damages to show the state that you shouldn't do this. This is a penalty to say, you better get your shit together or we're going to cost you more money. McCollum and Brown were 19 and 15, respectfully, when they were arrested in 1983 on charge of raping and murdering an 11-year-old uh, Sir Sabrina Brew. They were cursed into confessing, and police fabricated evidence against them while suppressing and ignoring evidence of their innocence. In 2014, they were exonerated after DNA evidence implicated Roscoe Artis, who had been convicted of a similar crime. McCollum and Brown, youth and intellectual disabilities made them particularly vulnerable to manipulation and coercion by police. Joe D'Ambrosio, in August 21, the Ohio Controlling Board voted unanimously to award Cleveland death row exoneree Joe to one million in compensation from the state's wrongful imprisonment fund for its wrongful conviction. D'Ambrosio was convicted of burglary, kidnapping, felony murder, and the aggravated murder of teenager Tony Klan in 1989. 
In early September 21, former death row prisoner Robert Miller reached a $2 million settlement with Oklahoma City for his wrongful conviction and death sentence for the rape of a murder of two elderly women. Both Ambrosio and Miller were tried and convicted in counties with long histories of prosecutorial misconduct and high rates of wrongful capital convictions. The compensation comes from more than a decade after each was released from incarceration. Uh, first of all, two things, to, I'm gonna give you my opinion on these. First of all, if a prosecutor does something with misconduct or a police officer, they should be held not only monetarily uh, accountable, but they should be held criminally uh, uh, accountable. In other words, they should lose their immunity and they should be able to be prosecuted or they should be prosecuted, whether it's by a federal government, their own government, or somebody's got to come in and say, what you're doing is wrong. What you just did to these people is not only wrong, it's criminal. You took a person's life away. It's no difference than you shooting somebody. It's no difference than you setting somebody up. That's what it's doing. You are literally ignoring what you, you know to be ignored. And I'm talking malicious stuff. People have evidence and they, they refuse to give it in. They, they do things totally against the law uh, for a conviction and for whatever reasons they do that. And they should be held criminally uh, liable, not just monetarily and, and not only lose their jobs and everything else, but I mean criminally liable. It's number one. My opinion on a death penalty is I don't believe in it. I have seen too many things happen, like these exonerations and stuff like that, or doing the law for 10 years. And also, watching how the government works and watching how bad lawyering works, how watching how, I guess, incompetent people themselves don't know how to help defend themselves and make false statements, uh, get, they get false confections out of people and stuff like that. So there's no question in my mind that we should uh, not have the death penalty. And here's another reason. And I know people say this, what happens if they raped your grandson or, great, or killed your grandson or daughter or whatever it is, and it was the most heinous crime? And I get it. But I think there's a way that, I think justice has a way of metting itself out. Meaning, these people are not going to a place that's, that's fun and like light and, and stuff of that nature. They're going to a prison that they're gonna be probably killed themselves. Look at Jeffrey Dahmer, look at Whitey Bulger. These people were murdered in prison. Uh, I think Timothy McVeigh would have been murdered in prison, even though he was on death row and he was executed. I think the, the system itself is brutal enough that we don't have a nice system. This isn't Norway, this isn't Sweden, or one of these other country, countries like Germany. We're not rehabilitating that guy. And I don't get justification for a religious person saying, oh, let's kill him, but then, you know, God wouldn't do that. I don't get it. You know, if you, if you want the sanctity of life, you should want the sanctity of all life, not just life that goes with your uh, 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 rights, if you want to call them that. So I, I don't buy that. I don't buy that for one bit. I believe in life in prison without patrol, parole, a whole other things you can do. I mean, they might, might even have certain hard labor things that can be done, but we don't belong killing a person. An eye for an eye is not what we're looking for. It doesn't bring back the victim. It doesn't give any closure either. In fact, I'd like to know that the guys in there live in this most worst life in the world. Ask me what life is like in a penitentiary where there were murderers. They're not having a great time, I can tell you that. They're trying to get high, they're trying to escape, they're doing crazy shit, but they're not having a good time. So my opinion is, let's abolish the death penalty and be one of the normal countries around the world, and, and we don't need it. Let's join the civilized world. That's my opinion. I hope you like this. I know this is an educational. People have been asking me about my opinion on the death penalty. There it is. Let's abolish the death penalty. Have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe. Please stay safe. Make good choices. Don't get into the system. Remember this, I believe in bad choices, not bad people. I really do. Obviously, there are some bad people, but you, I think you get my drift. Have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe. See you soon.